I've been asked to talk a little bit about my brother, Staff Sergeant Darren James Cunningham. Talk about the kind of person he was like, um, his interests, things like that. Um, and make it seem so that while we may have graduated 35 and 37 years ago, we're not too unlike the students that are in, the, in school today. So what was Darren like? The first thing that everybody remembers about Darren is that he was just big. He was big everywhere. He was big here, huge heart, obviously, huge voice, bigger than mine, uh, and just so full of life. And, and he, was, he was really fun to be with. He was always um, very happygoing. He loved people. He loved to laugh. He loved to make others laugh. He wasn't quite the class clown, but he was funny. Um, he was an excellent athlete. Um, he played on the basketball team and on the soccer team. Some of his closest and dearest friends throughout his life came from those very teams. He made me laugh a lot. You know, he was that type of a kid and a uh, uh, generous kid, just uh, um, well-liked by his classmates. He was kind of a little bit of a prankster. The worst thing you can do to a seventh grader is make him late for class. So we would do things like either maybe take him and hold him in a locker till the bell rang, or even better, we'd take him and leave him outdoors and we'd hold the door until the bell rang and then they'd have to run it. And Darren always liked that because it was fun. Um, it was just devious enough. It wasn't that mean and no one was getting hurt. No one was getting in real trouble. Um, Darren realized when he was younger and was going through high school that going to college wasn't really for him and thought that the military was a better option and it was. While we were young people growing up in the town of Groton, it was always kind of a understood thing that Darren would probably join the military. He loved town but he came from a military family so from a young age that was his goal in life. And I can recall having a conversation with Darren one time about what he wanted to do after leaving high school and he, he, without even hesitation he said he wanted to go into the military and serve his country. Darren loved the military. Um, it fit right in with his personality. Someone that liked uh, regimentation, um, that liked things planned out, that um, you were able to set a course and um, and do the action necessary to make something happen. And if you read uh, what he writes in the yearbook, it's he wants to go play, wants to travel the world and see everything. He was in Germany, he was in Korea, several different places here in the United States. Um, but Groton was always home, always home. Whenever he had time off from the military for his rest and relaxation period, most of the time he ended up coming back home to Groton and that was to not just see our parents but also to visit grandparents, aunts and uncles and um, for most of us our biggest thing was to always go back to the Groton House of Pizza and go see Fani who owns the Groton House of Pizza um, and if you go into the Groton House of Pizza to this day you will see a picture of my brother as you enter in the door when he became your friend, he became your friend for life. That was how he was. Uh, and he became absolutely devoted um, and loyal to his, to his friendships. Um, if any of them ever were to be in any kind of trouble and he could assist, he would, he'd come running and uh, would bail you out, which lent itself to making him a, a great soldier. Yeah, I remember uh, how I heard that, that Darren had, uh, had been killed and uh, it was a scroll on the news in the morning over my coffee, of course. And I, and I looked at it, you know, and it was that, you know, wow, I know that name. And no, that doesn't make sense. That must, that must be wrong. And I kind of waited for the news to go through and, and they talked some more. And, and at one point, somebody finally said it out loud. And I just... I just remember thinking of him and uh, that big, that big belly laugh and smile of his that was just always there. And 
and I realized then that, you know, we were we were friends, and uh, you know, 25 years too late, but I wish we had been a little bit closer. And uh, at the funeral, um, the services that they held for him at Fort Hood, which is where he was stationed, the commanding officer of his uh, unit, the, uh, the colonel, had told me that there was no one that he could rely on more, that he would put his life in Darren's hands, that Darren was that type of person that would get the job done, and he would make sure that everybody was coming home. Good morning. Um, first, I'd like to thank you for giving me some time to talk a little bit about my brother, Sergeant William Wojtowicz. Uh, Bill grew up in Groton, and he attended Groton Dunstable Regional High School before he went on to a career in the Marine Corps. Once Bill realized that he wanted to qualify for MARSOC, he redoubled his training efforts. Uh, he did weighted rucks for fun. Uh, he disciplined himself to use all of his free time to make himself a better warrior. The only thing I remember him struggling with when he was trying out for MARSOC uh, was his, sh his shooting. He had to qualify expert, and he had a hard time with that. So he convinced his instructors to stay after and work with him on extra time and do one-on-one -on -one work so that he could bring his shooting up and eventually he qualified expert and, and uh, made it into the MARSOC program. Uh, another thing I remember about Bill is that you know he was this elite warrior in a, a special operations group and it didn't change him a bit. Speaking with the guys that he worked with in the Marine Corps um, and over in Afghanistan, they remember the same thing, I, same things that I do about Bill, his smile, his energy his courage. Bill loved his time in the Marine Corps and he loved the men he served with. Um, Bill was killed when he leapt over a wall and laid down covering fire, exposing himself to the ener enemy's fire um, so that he could save the lives of, of his brothers, the men, the men he worked with. Um, five guys' lives were saved that day when they were able to get to cover, um, but when Bill came back over the wall, he was fatally wounded. Take some lessons from Bill. Smile. Live life to the fullest. Go for your dreams. I think everyone that knew Bill remembers him fondly. Um, and I know Bill didn't have any regrets. He, he did what he wanted to do, and he lived a life that he was proud of. Thanks for taking the time this morning uh, to remember Bill and some other veterans. What I remember and I can't thank Billy enough for was that when my son, Will, um, came to Groton Dunstable, he had gone to a small school where we live in New Hampshire for nine years, and we decided to bring him in as a sophomore. And, uh, and fortunately, uh, Will's first class was with Miss Cook's 10th grade English class. And fortunately enough, Billy Woiderwitz was sitting right next to Will, and they struck up a conversation. They probably weren't listening to Miss Cook, so they were just talking together. But uh, when Billy found out that uh, um, I was Will's dad, he said, he said, so, Bill Bosch, so um, you must be little Billy Bosch. And so that's how he described my son. He, he, uh, that became my son's nickname, Little Billy. And uh, so Bill Woidowitz brought him around and, and introduced him to a lot of his friends and so it really br broke the ice for my son and I was so thankful that he did that because it just took a couple of days and and will fit right in so you know these are kids um, Darren and Billy who um, are part of our legacy they're part of our family at Groton Dunstable um, and you know their their family think about them every day I know uh, and with Veterans Day coming up, I hope that we'll think about them too because they did, they did a lot for us in trying to preserve our freedom and we owe them a lot and we miss them. We hope that everybody from school and from town gathers around and encompasses these two and what they did for our nation and memorializes them just as we do, just by sharing our memories of them. Thank you.